Hi, I'm Melanie Ann Phillips, creator of Storyweaver and co-creator of Dramatica, and welcome to an overview of the Storyweaver software. Now, before we go any farther, if you need help at any time, just click on the Help item in the menu bar, and it will take you to a complete list of all of Storyweaver's features and how to use them. And you can also get there just by clicking on the little question mark in the toolbar. But first now, what is Storyweaver? Well, Storyweaver is a whole new way of approaching story development. Most software out there focuses on the story and its needs. Storyweaver focuses on the author and the author's needs. For example, most programs will say, well, you need to have a protagonist, and the protagonist has to have a goal, and the protagonist has to be driven by some sort of angst or issue or ghost. Well, all these things are true, but if you're coming to a story and you just have a little bit of an idea of what you want to do, you may not be able to easily answer those questions and it immediately becomes a job instead of a fun creative project. What Storyweaver does is it turns that around and changes the focus from what the story needs to what the author needs. It looks at the creative process itself and says, how do authors come to their novels or screenplays and how can we support that in a creative and interesting manner? So, Storyweaver divides the story development process into four stages. Inspiration, development, exposition, and storytelling. In the first stage, inspiration, that's where you're going to work out your story's world, who's in it, what happens to them, and what it all means. It's where you're going to be able to jot down any ideas, if you have some, about what you'd like in your story, whether it's a snippet of dialogue, a bit of action you've always wanted to see in a screenplay or write in a novel, perhaps just a setting or a time or a personal experience that was meaningful to you or even just a mood that you'd like to convey. Well, once you have that done, that's not the end of inspiration. That's just the beginning because you're going to want to fill that out until it becomes a complete skeleton or blueprint for your story. And step by step, story card by story card, Storyweaver will lead you through that process, giving you inspiration ideas for how to come up with these concepts, describing how you might want to use them in a story, and guiding you every step of the way until you've worked out completely your characters, plot, theme, genre, and how your overall story hangs together. But that's just the skeleton. So, out of the over 200 questions in Storyweaver, we now move into the second stage, development. And this is where we put flesh on that skeleton. This is where we begin to give it some form and some shape. It's where we take the basic inspired concepts we have and start to add depth and breadth, richness, shading, and flavor to them so that it becomes more real and less just a blueprint. By the end of the development stage, You'll have not only a story that hangs together and makes sense and feels complete, but it's also got a fullness to it. It's become three-dimensional and well-rounded. Still, there's more. Just because you know what your story is about doesn't mean your audience or reader is going to. Not until you tell them. But you don't necessarily want to tell them everything right up front. In stories, sometimes it's better to hold back information or to mislead your audience or your reader and then surprise them later. And so we go into the third stage of story called exposition. Now in exposition, you'll work out what we call an exposition plan, which is a, a guide that says, here's how I'm going to reveal the different aspects of my story. Do I want to tell the audience who the protagonist is right up front? Or do I want them to find out only as the story goes along and other characters are introduced until we know who really is the protagonist? Or that the goal appears to be one thing and turns out to be something completely different and the originally stated goal was just a ruse or a subterfuge? Well, that's what you'll deal with in your exposition plan. And yet, we're still not finished. Because now we've given our story depth and we know what it's all about and we know how we're going to reveal it but we haven't actually told our story yet. So we move to the fourth stage, storytelling. And here, we're going to work out the manner in which we reveal our story as it unfolds for the audience or reader. We have various techniques for making it interesting and riveting and conveying the information. In addition, we'll start in the storytelling stage to work out our scenes and or chapters to develop our acts that our story falls into. 
and you'll be able to create as many scenes or chapters as you want right in the StoryWeaver software. By the time you finish that final stage of storytelling, you're able to get your reports. Your reports are going to come in two forms. One, it's going to be a treatment talking about everything and everybody and all that happens in your story. As if you were describing it to someone and saying, my story is about such and such, and these people are in it, and they've got this problem, and they're doing this. That's what your treatment's going to be like. It could be short for a short story, just a page or two, or you might write 40 pages or more. In fact, in Story Reaver, you can make it as big as you want. There's no limit on the file size or how many pages you can write. But it's not your completed story. It's just an off-handed, full description of everything in it to give the mood, the flavor, and all of the contents. But beyond that, what happens first? What happens next? What happens in Act 2, as a lot of people ask? And how do I get from the beginning to the end? Well, that's the second report. That's going to be the list of all the scenes and chapters and acts that you created, which will list step by step, moment by moment, everything that needs to happen in your story, who's doing it or who it happens to, what it's intended to mean, and all of the material you developed is associated with that. So you're able to refer to it as you actually sit down to write your story. Now, in the end, you're able to export any or all of these things. You can choose just one question or, or one answer and export it, or you can export the whole darn thing, everything you've created, to an RTF file that can be opened in any word processor or pulled into a screenwriting program such as Final Draft or Movie Magic Screenwriter. In addition, you can print it out anytime you want to tack on your wall and use it for reference. Now, StoryWeaver can work on as many different stories as you want, when you open it, it always opens to a fresh blank template, just like Microsoft Word. So there's nothing in it. Don't think your story's gone away. Once you save a story file, then you can always open it to work on it again just by going up to the File menu once you've opened StoryWeaver and selecting the file that you'd like to open. But each time, it'll start new and fresh and blank in case you want to start a new story or just jot down some creative ideas. Now, that's pretty much how it works, and I'll be back throughout this program with additional video help. But keep in mind that if you want some other help and maybe some other videos beyond what's in StoryWeaver, you can visit us at storymind.com. That's S-T-O-R-Y-M-I-N-D.com, where you'll find hundreds of pages of articles, hours of streaming video, and, of course, what we feel are the best products ever created for writers. Thanks for your time, and good luck in your story.